Hey guys, this is Shannon with Black Sheep House. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I did this makeover on this beautiful table using black paint and a graining tool and why it's such an easy DIY. Let's get to it. You're gonna need a graining tool, some black paint and a paintbrush. I use Dixie Bell and a 2.5 inch. You're gonna need a high density foam roller and some clear matte poly, any brand will do. Starting out with the tabletop only, I am just brushing the paint on a nice even layer and then I'm going to use the graining tool which you might think is going to be more complicated, but actually it's it's so much easier and way more forgiving to use the graining tool on the tabletop because you're not gonna have to worry about brush strokes because the graining tool is going to create its own texture and you don't have to strip down the tabletop like a lot of um, these wood tabletops. They might have like solid wood underneath, but they might have a veneer on top and you might not like the way that veneer looks. So for this table, the graining tool just made a lot of sense for us. I just rock it back and forth as I um, go forward with it. And I'll even do some, you know, unsteady shakes on purpose to give it that realistic look. This is so easy. I go back over it with the foam roller once, maybe twice just to smooth everything out because I don't like how harsh the grain tool, maybe you've used a grain tool before but I don't like how harsh it looks. You can see on that spot that I just did, I actually repainted over it because I didn't like how it looked, painted over it again, and then um, used the graining tool again. You can see when I use the foam roller, it just kind of blackens everything up and it makes this table look like it was stained black instead of just like this dramatic contrast. Now, the more you sand your table, the more the paint will absorb into it and you'll get like a very, very black looking um, base instead of like the brown peeking through. It'll be more like the black and gray peeking through. This table in the middle has a leaf that has like a, you know, two pieces of wood. And so I did it in um, just halves on that side, but on the parts that were long, I went the entire length of the table. Next up, I'm just painting on with a paintbrush, the black paint that I used, and I get it on there nice and thick. And then I'll just go back over it with the foam roller so that I don't have any drips and it just smooths out the finish. It gives it just a really nice professional looking. Um, it's the next best thing to being sprayed. I am such a big fan of this technique. You can use it on any of the projects that you do. And I learned this from a cabinet refinisher. So it's a really good technique. You might have to do two coats on the table to get the desired black that you want. I definitely did. And then I'm going over it with the clear coat. I used a water-based clear coat because I didn't want it to yellow or anything like that. But you could certainly use, if you're going to have like a, a really heavily used table, um, you might want to go with a oil-based polyurethane that will um, yellow a little bit over time. But... I just went with the clear polyacrylic and I used Verithane, but I've used the other brands. I think I've used every poly at this point and I like pretty much all of them. They all do the same thing and they're about $10 at Home Depot or Lowe's or Amazon. I do the same technique with the poly. See how streaky it is with the paintbrush? Maybe that's because I'm a messy painter. <laughs> But I'll go over it with the foam roller. I used the same one, just cleaned it. I made sure to get all my black painting done first. And then I cleaned both my brush and my roller and used the same ones for the clear coat. And I just go over that. Now, the amount of clear coat that you want to use, you just want to get it on there um, to where it's, you know, you can see the, like the film look of it, you know, that white milky substance. You definitely want to see it as you paint it on especially on the top because that's where you're going to need your durability. And I'm just doing this in the garage. If you're doing it outside, you may have to sand in between coats because sometimes debris from outside can fall onto your finish. I always pour it into a cup. First, I do that with my paint as well. That way when I'm dipping back and forth, I'm not 
um, compromising the the clear coat that I want to use later on. Maybe I want to use it for a white piece, but my black paint was in there, you know, mixed up in there. So I always use a solo cup and I'll paint it on there pretty thick, but the goal really is just to get it on first and then you're going to go over it um, with the foam roller or like I do in this because I really wanted it on there really nice and thick. I'm just going to brush over top of it one long sweep to smooth the finish all out and because it's laying on a tabletop it is going to level quite a bit and it won't drip being on there so thick it um as if it like it would if it were on a cabinet door or a dresser drawer or something like that so i can put it on really thick and then just smooth it out and it's nice and cold outside so i didn't have to worry about my finish trying to dry on me too quickly, which is a um, silver lining for it being so cold. <laughs> but yeah, depending on your climate, you might have to be working a little bit faster before it dries. But again, that's the bonus of putting it on there so thick. Another thing that you can do is just keep a water bottle handy or another cup and you can dip your brush in a little bit of water just to keep things moving. And that keeps... Um, your finish looking nice and smooth too. If you guys have any questions at all, leave them in the comments and I will be more than happy to answer them. I do a lot of DIYs, mostly furniture on this channel and design stuff. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stick around and you won't miss anything that I'm going to be posting in the future. I always worry about the edges last. So if it's dripping don't worry about it on the edges. Just really worry about getting the smoothness of your top coat. And then you can go around. I literally use my hand. I go around and just smooth the edges. I'll go underneath and then I'll also use my hand to smooth it all out on the sides too. Here's how the table turned out. I'm really happy with it and I can't believe how easy and inexpensive this DIY was. Plus this look is very traditional, but it's timeless and it could go with boho, but it could go with like farmhouse too. It's just very versatile looking and I love that about this. I hope that you guys hit that subscribe button like I asked earlier and that you guys will be around for the next video. Thanks so much for watching and let me know if you try this DIY. Feel free to follow me on Instagram too because I'm always posting behind the scenes stuff there. Bye!